And we can see here in the foreground one of the plant growth chambers. And floating above it from our perspective is payload commander Susan Helms documenting the plants via still photos. This particular container holds four of 20 seedlings, some of fir and some of the loblolly pine. Two of each four in each of these containers are bent. The other two are the controls in the experiment are left unbent. Samples of both the bent and the unbent pines will be cut on this flight day and another flight day. After having been bent on flight day three, those samples will be preserved and returned to Earth for further study. We can see now members of Columbia's payload crew now preparing to take a cutting from these seedlings. From this vantage point, we can clearly see that two of these seedlings uh, are in bent positions. This was performed on flight day three. And the control samples within this plant growth container are unbent. In this procedure, one payload crew member makes a rough cut of the seedling, while the other payload crew member stands ready with the vacuum to remove any potentially hazardous debris from the weightless environment inside the Space Lab module. We can now see payload specialist Jean-Jacques Favier floating near the front of the Space Lab module in front of the workbench where he is stowing equipment used to take cuttings from fir seedlings as part of the plant growth facility experiment. We can now see payload specialist Jean-Jacques Favier working within the plant growth facility glove bag. He has isolated a fixation bag and is now removing uh, one of the fur seedling samples harvested a few moments ago. The purpose of the glove bag is to provide an additional level of safety in containing the uh, chemical fixative used to preserve the sample. And we can see him now installing the sample into the fixative bag. He will then reinstall this clip to seal the opening of the bag through which the sample was installed. The chemical fixative is contained within the lower portion of the bag between the other two clips.
Th this is Michelle Coyden with the Associated Press. Have you noticed increasing fatigue and short-term memory loss as the mission goes on? And could this be a major problem on flights this long? Uh, to answer your question, I think uh, the crew has been doing exceptionally well. Uh, it's a uh, 17-day mission now, and I think we're pacing ourselves. We're right on target, and I don't think we've had excessive fatigue or any memory loss. We, in fact, seem to be working better uh, both individually and together as a unit. Uh, this is Mark Crow of the Houston Chronicle, and uh, my question is for either uh, Tom Hendricks or uh, Susan, could you just give us a sense, your sense of the success of your endeavor to this, to this point? Do you feel like you're accomplishing the mission goals? Uh, yes, Mark, in a nutshell, we had a very, very demanding mission that uh, from the very beginning was going to be challenging just simply because it was so unique and had so many different aspects between the microgravity as well as the life science. And we have just been thrilled to be able to accomplish all that we were able to accomplish. And to tell you the truth, coming into this mission, I don't think I was sure it could be done. And these guys have been outstanding in the sense that they've been able to get right to it and, and do things. And we've had a few glitches, but they got fixed thanks to the great support we had from the ground. And you can't ask for more than that. It's been great. That concludes our questions uh, from JSC Columbia. Please stand by for KSC PAO. Columbia, this is Kennedy PAO. How do you hear me? Columbia reads you loud and clear, and we're ready for the questions. Go ahead, Irene. This is Irene Brown with UPI for um, Tom Hendricks. I don't know what you uh, know of the Saudi bombing that happened um, last week, and I was wondering if you, there's a memorial service this afternoon for five of the uh, crew members who are from a unit that um, also supports NASA's shuttle launches. I was wondering if you knew any of these people from previous shuttle missions or training, and if you had any thoughts on the incidents from your perspective in space. Well, we have seen uh, Saudi Arabia uh, several times during the mission, and we regret that there were any uh, loss of life and especially uh, loss of uh, military members that uh, some of us may have known. We were notified by message, but we have not seen a list of the casualties. Our sympathies uh, go out to those that lost loved ones, and our prayers go out to those that are still in the recovery. And from space, uh, we do not see the conflicts that the humans are uh, going under on the Earth. We just see a beautiful Earth, and we wish that we could share that perspective and help bring peace through the perspective from space. This is Stephen Young with Reuters for Susan Helms. I was wondering how you're feeling um, this far into the mission, which is longer than, than many shuttle flights uh, previously. And you seem to be quite uh, keen to go longer than 17 days. How much longer do you think uh, you could uh, continue on board? Well, you're right. This is going to be my longest mission. I've had two before, and one of them was six days, and the other one was 11 to 12 days. And it uh, looks like we're at the 11-day point today, and I, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling better uh, than I ever thought. Uh, absolutely no problems uh, with, with any of my physiological uh, being because I've been getting exercise and eating well and sleeping well and uh, done that in the past, but there's no change for this mission, so things are going extremely well. Uh, as far as how long we could go on this flight, unfortunately, we don't have the consumables to get beyond a certain point. And that's probably about flight day 19 or 20. And if that's what they want to give to us, we would take it. But I suspect we're probably going to land on Sunday. And the next time around, maybe my next flight will be even longer than this one. And that would be great. Robin Soriano with Florida Today. For Susan, Kevin, or Tom, you've had the chance on this flight to use video teleconferencing to fix things and to talk with families. I wonder how that uh, has made a difference as compared to previous missions. Well, the, the KCA or the video t teleconferencing that we've been using has really been outstanding. Um, we uh, showed it when we uh, fixed the bubble drop experiment. It was a lot easier to talk to people with a two-way communication. They could show us uh, diagrams. They could point exactly the item that we needed to fix as opposed to sending
sending up a message and then trying to interpret the message. It also has uh, been a morale booster because we've been able to uh, talk to our, our families with uh, the new video teleconference. So I think it's a great study, uh, step in the future, and I think uh, they'll probably have it on the International Space Station. Bill Harwood for CBS News. Uh, for anyone, really, uh, Commander Hendricks, you talked to the group in Houston that's in the chamber, the uh, life support chamber that they're testing regenerative uh, life support systems the other day. And I'm curious, uh, from your perspective on a 17-day mission and thinking about Shannon Lucid on Mir, how does it shake out in terms of the psychological pressures on living with a large group of people in a small area versus the medical sorts of things you guys are studying? What's, what's kind of the balance there for long-term space flight? Well, we can only speak from this experience, and from this experience, it's been absolutely fantastic working as a team together. In fact, uh, what you're seeing here is just a small part of the team. The entire team includes all the people in Houston, at uh, Huntsville, Alabama, and at the primary investigator sites around the world. And we're just a visible part of that team. Uh, four of us are the subjects for the majority of the experiments, and we don't feel that we're in an enclosed environment. Uh, through the communications that we have, we feel like we're just a uh, member of the team. And although it may be, uh, it p appears to be a small, confined environment, to us it seems very roomy. We can uh, wander between the space lab and the flight deck, look out the window, come back and do some work. And uh, we don't have a problem at all with 17 days. And with this sort of communication capabilities and the roominess that we have with the laboratory, or the future space station, I don't see a problem with the long-term flights. And, of course, uh, Shannon Lucent can give us a better perspective from Mir. This is Coach on Earth News for Rick Linehan. Uh, what's it like as a veterinarian uh, handling these uh, large um, two-legged mammals uh, instead of your normal uh, animals that you would handle? to us, or at least the four members of the payload crew, and uh, I, I used to joke about that. Um, uh, we, we are the experiment on this flight, and uh, over the uh, excess of two weeks of the flight, we'll be studying uh, muscle, bone, uh, calcium metabolism, uh, different physiologies as pertains to uh, how a human might uh, live long-term in space. And uh, as Commander Hendricks has talked about, uh, this is sort of a prelude to uh, stay on the space station. A lot of the... Uh, uh, studies that we're doing here actually are being done on a long term with this many many people in a group for the first time and we'll use all this data uh, to uh, step man and staff the space station uh, and uh, figure out better ways to keep people in space longer, keep them healthier, stop the muscle and bone degeneration and as a spin-off of that we're also able to use this data hopefully uh, to uh, look at the disease processes which occur in our elderly population on the ground and hopefully uh, uh, down the line, uh, use this as a uh, way to control that also. Tell me, for any young people who are aspiring to be just like you, who are at home here in North Carolina, any advice you want to give to any aspiring new astronauts, sir? Well, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's been fun. We had a chance to talk with many school kids, uh, all the crew members here participating with SARX Amateur Radio, and so we talked with the schools around the, around the world, and listening to my crewmates and myself, I think we, uh, we all agree that uh, to work hard, to dream uh, those dreams, and to not give up on dreams, and to take good care of oneself, and, uh, and to keep uh, working as, unit, as a team, uh, trusting in people, and helping each other out, those are the keys not only to... Uh, becoming an astronaut, but to life also.